It's perfect. Mm. Fang an, verdammt nochmal. Ja, echt. Hello and welcome to the second season of vis, -vis Interviews, the series where we're talking with inspiring people, try to filter their tips and tricks so that everybody can use their tools for their own life. Today we're here with Michael McCormick-Williams. You're born in America, you came here to Austria, where you're um, currently a senior lecturer at the Fachhochschule in Vorarlberg, where we are today. Um, big shout out to the Startup-Stube. You got your education at the UCL University, where you got both of your master's degrees, which is ranked one of the top 10 universities in the world. Uh, you're even a guest lecturer at many uh, faculties around the globe, including the Oxford University. And you did all that while raising eight kids. <laughs> So that's, that's pretty impressive, but that's not the reason why you're here today. It's about uh, the thing that you're, I think you're a teacher that really cares about their students, like the, you want them to do their best. And to apply one of the first things I learned from you is that I'm going to stop broadcasting now and we're going to start a communication. So the first question is, if you got the chance to put up a huge billboard here at the highway at the A14 with whatever meaning, whatever sentence or word you want it to be, what would that be? Yeah. Uh, it's a quote from Seneca, mm -hmm. uh, you know, who's a Stoic philosopher, a Greek Stoic philosopher. Whatever you do, keep death in mind. <laughs> That's an awesome picture to put on the billboard. <laughs> what's, what's the meaning behind it? What, why do you choose that? Well, because I think you, you should keep death in mind. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's a lot to do with how you conceptualize time. Mm -hmm. And um, and people are usually afraid of death, mm -hmm. and uh, so Seneca was dealing with that, you know. And if you are not afraid of death, mm -hmm. if you keep that in mind all the time, then you will truly live. You know, what, what do you really have to lose? You know, you're going to die anyway. <laughs> you know, so you yeah. might as well do it. <laughs> you know, so, oh, well, what do they say? Who cares? You know, that's that's. No, I think it's <laughs> death, the great equalizer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> no, it's uh, that. <laughs> but let, let's, stay, let's stay on the, on the topic of time, uh, but let's go back a little in time. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to when you were 18 again. Like, uh -huh. What's one piece of advice you would give yourself now? Besides swearing at myself? Yeah, besides um, that? Have, have no fear. Okay. But I don't know. I mean, it, it, well, it's, all, it's all relative. Because at 18, I was playing in a punk band, you know, and obviously I, 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 and I really never really cared what people thought of me. Okay. You know, that's, that's, and, and that's interesting because 18, I was in, in a boarding school and so, and I had a circle of friends, but I had different friends. It's, and then you had these cliques and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And people, you know, thought, oh, you're aloof because I'm, I'm, I'm happy with myself. And... And I was like, not really, but I, you know, I think I'm more happy. I'm happy with myself. Mm -hmm. I can be alone, still and be still, you know, and there's some people who can't be alone. Mm -hmm. You know, so but when, as an 18 year old, I think, yeah, just be, be uh, more fearless. Did you always <clears throat> wanted to become a teacher? Because you said <laughs> hell you know, no. Yeah, hell no, right? <laughs> because you said you had some great teachers, like where you think, okay, maybe that's the reason why I got to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason we're doing this whole format is because we we want we want to try to help people like find their passion. Yeah. And, and what is like one piece of advice you would give to people who didn't find their passion, or like 18 are at the beginning of their careers, or are even 15 years or 50 years old and still say, man, I hate my job, I hate everything I do. Like, is there like a good piece of advice you would give people? Try different things. Okay. Try everything. Okay. I didn't. And, I, I mean, that's the that's the great thing about you know growing up in the states. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I have done almost every job you can think of, <laughs> you know, I have, I have cleaned toilets, I have, you know, I have dug ditches and like with, with, you know, alcoholics in the morning, you know, it's like in, in, in doing construction work in Florida, you know, in the wow. summer, <laughs> mm. can't get better than that, audio engineer, uh, hotel front desk management, you know, all, you, just a myriad of different things and yeah and then uh, and then finally you know I, I and this is all this without education mm -hmm. um education whatever that is now <laughs> um again 
you need to carve out within, you know, okay, fine. Uh, and I think that's, I think it's really bad that, that, that you're like, you hate your job mm -hmm. or you're like, I do this job so I can, so I can do music or I can yeah. do something else. You got to find your passion within that. You got to carve out mm -hmm. some room for that. Mm -hmm. You know, so again, I mean, I think you need to, okay, you can bitch and moan and, and carry on about the system, man, get down with the man. Okay, uh, yeah, but at the end of the day, get off your ass and do something then. You know, carve out that niche for yourself so you can make it. You know, I, I always said, you know, God's given me this job, I'm doing this job, I'll do it to the best of my ability. You want me to clean that toilet? That'll be the cleanest damn toilet you've ever seen. And I'll do it my best of my ability, and hopefully he'll give me something more. Yeah. And so I've done that. That's been my thing throughout life, and God's given me more. You're really you're honing your skills. You're training yourself. Don't expect somebody else to do it for you. You do it for yourself. Of course, of course, yeah. You're putting this situation to make the best out of it. Okay. If you frame it that way, anything will be a poison chalice. So I know I frame it as like, hey. I get to spend time with guys like you and then probably drink myself blind afterwards, but um, no, but I get to spend time with the future. Yeah. That's great. Oh my gosh. I can't think of a, a better, a better thing to do with my time, you know? But how did it get teaching them? Well, okay, fine. Well, I have many stories about that. Uh, but I think one of the stories was I just one day I snapped. You know, <laughs> just one day I was cleaning one too many toilets, <laughs> saying I can't be doing this the rest of my life. <laughs> you know, I can't be doing this. You know, so, so uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> so, um, and so, and then I, I look back. I started going, okay, fine. I've got to get an education. So what would I get it in? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so it was a little bit of looking back at my life and saying okay fine every job i had i basically mastered and i taught somebody else mm -hmm. to do okay so i said oh that's that's you know teaching okay fine uh it you know so, so to do my my bachelor's degree and this this was this was a pivotal moment in my my life i had a mentor uh you know her name uh, was dr bainey mm -hmm. and i was i was doing i was finally going to do my bachelor's degree <laughs> eastern college now it's eastern university finally going to do it and got in and i had a linguistics course with her and so it was like it's a four-year degree so and i was trying to do it in three you know mm -hmm. just get through it yeah. as quickly as possible D before you yeah. talk did you already knew then that you were going to be a teacher well i didn't know no no okay not really. so you were just going to university well and... i i knew I, I wanted to do something like that. I, I needed a degree. Mm -hmm. So this, okay. is, this is the yeah. pivotal moment because uh, it was, uh, you know, I, I guess I was like one year, two and a half years in, mm -hmm. uh, and you have to make, and you have to like here, you have to decide on your, on your uh, concentration mm -hmm. or your major as yep. you say in the United States. So I was like, okay, fine. I guess I'll, you know, I'll do English literature. <laughs> and she, and she, and I, I was talking to her because, mm -hmm. She was she was my mentor. Mm -hmm. Without her, I would never be the half the teacher I am. Well, really, I mean, yeah. that's, this was a pivotal moment in my life. Um, that uh, she she's like, you know, and she'd like to talk to students afterwards, and she's like, you don't want to do that. That's boring. I'm like, excuse me, what? <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> what, what do I want to do then? She says, you want you want to uh, you want to create your design your own your own degree. I'm like, excuse me? Am I allowed to do that? <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, where, where, where do I do this? Yeah. I, and she said, fine. You come up with a concept, mm -hmm. and I will I will float it in front of the academic committee. And I'm like, what? This turned my entire yeah. my, my entire concept about education. I mean, I wanted my education. Mm -hmm. I was I mean, I was uh, in my mid twenties, mm -hmm. and or yeah, mid mid twenties. Um, and I wanted this. Unlike other 18-year-olds, they didn't know yeah. I wanted this, and I would, I would, and I was paying as I went. Yeah. So I was working full time, doing any shit job you gave me, you know, car detailing. <laughs> I did that. I did every damn job you gave me. Okay, fine. You give, oh, okay, I'll do that. Well, you know, yeah. um, just the, and I've sold. I sold everything I loved. I sold everything I loved. Every you know, every instrument I had. I had guitars. I had drum sets. I sold. Everything I had 
just It'll to get through. through. Yeah, just to get well, through, just to get through because, um, you know, uh, books cost, yeah. tuition costs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I see it with my kids because I, I, I was just uh, I, in in our family chat, and my daughter, uh, she's now doing. Um, Topping off a, a, a degree at a private uni in Salzburg, mm -hmm. and she's a she's a, a surgical nurse, okay. and she's just oh. like, and she was just like saying, "Oh, this is great! These people are fantastic." And I said, "Be grateful that you are, you know, you're in a profession that mm -hmm. you love." I mm -hmm. said, "That is gold." Yeah. I said, "You know, I um, and yeah, you, know, you have to make your." make peace i mean you can't be a superstar you can't have it all yeah. you know i still you know uh, like music and art and stuff like that <laughs> at, at the end you can't outrun this stuff <laughs> it will run you down yeah. because i'm con i'm still writing poetry i'm still writing music i'm still writing you know doing stuff like that mm -hmm. you know i it just can't i can't outrun it yeah. i think just put it away put it in a box <laughs> put it down, put it down. <laughs> you know you can't you just can't do that but uh but i'm glad i didn't stay a drummer mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm, I'm glad I became a teacher because that gives me a whole wide array of things I can give mm -hmm. and I can I can I can pull into different fields and so that's what teaching yeah. does teaching pulls from different fields that's why it's not really considered a profession <laughs> like like a doctor or something <laughs> a lawyer but it is yeah. how do you deal with negative people like People that say you can't do that or no, you, that's that's not possible. Like, how do you deal with that? People who say I can't do it. Yeah. Well, you know, and a certain. Well, it depends on how old you are. Okay. You know, when I had that before, you know, I was like, you know, as a, as a teenager, yeah. or as a kid, it's like, okay, fine, that's just fuel. Yeah. That's like, okay, fine. You you say I can't do it, then I'm definitely I'm going to do it now, <laughs> even if I don't want to do it, I'm doing it. <laughs> You know, you just have to be very strategic about it. If you're older like me, you're not going to say, well, you know, fuck you, man. It's like, no, that's not going to happen, you know. But then, then you just say, okay, fine, let's pragmatically look at it because it's not, you're not the only stakeholder in this thing, you know. You're not the only person. You know, it's, it's, so it's that. So it's pragmatics of the whole situation. But on the psychological level, you know, when do you cut and run? Well, when you start doubting your own self-worth, that's when you say, we're done here. We're done here. That's it. Because nobody has the right to take that away from you. No one. Uh, again, you have to, to self-assess and say, well, you know, not every, not every relationship is going to be 100% back. Mm -hmm. But if it's detrimental to you, if it starts, you start questioning yourself, mm -hmm. Then you then you have to take the toxic person out of that. Yeah. You know, because again, I mean, it, it, relationships should be good ones. Should be reciprocal. Should be a back and forth. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's how you frame it. If relationship is important, um, I think you know, um, you know, then every and this goes goes back to the whole death thing. <laughs> oh, it's all connected yeah. now. Okay. <laughs> Because it's the way you frame it, you know, and um, it's it's okay, fine. If you know, you can always die. You don't know when you're gonna die. So, the time that you have with your kids or with whoever, that's a precious time. So I don't have time for bitching and moaning. I don't have time to avoid. I, I you, you should you know complain about certain things if you're going to fix them. Yeah. And you have the power to flick, fix them. If not, then shut up and get on with it. You have to drill down. And you have to really reflect on on who you are, mm -hmm. and this is this is what led me to you know education. Mm -hmm. Is basically I'm a naturally curious person, meaning I want to know. Mm -hmm. I constantly want to know. Love. We we talked about. Do I have to put my jacket on. So it's... no, no, can let it be like this. We talk about everything, time, reframing. I don't even know when we're here for. We've been here for Almost five days. Four, five, five days, yeah, it feels like this. Jesus Christ, it's almost a lot. Last thing? <laughs> Fucking hell! <laughs> yeah. no, it was supposed to be like, oh, just a quick day. <laughs> get together. Is it 11? It's, it's fucking fuck, almost okay. 11 o'clock. Damn, okay. Last thing. Say your, <laughs> say your last word. Say <laughs> my, my last word. <laughs> No, I love you! <laughs> yes? They said it would be a good time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Say the, the last things you want to say. What should the, the viewers take away? The last thing you want to give them on their way. 
I'm gonna say thank you and the stage is yours. Yeah. Uh, one thing I, I wanted to say to everybody is fucking lighten up, okay? Don't take things so seriously, okay? Because once you lose your humor, you lose all hope. <laughs> and, and if you have hope, there's a chance. Okay, so keep your humor, lighten up, and be nice to each other. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome, that was perfect.